Hello all and welcome to the Accommodation Workshop. Accommodation Services is part of Student Services and is located within Building 21D of the St Lucia campus opposite Boost Juice in the refectory area. Our accommodation team provide free tenancy advice to current and prospective students, both international and domestic, as well as offer a range of resources for living and life skills, such as conflict resolution, living in a share house, and resources for renters in Brisbane. To begin, let's look at finding a place. We will look at the rental market, your options, risks, documents to prepare, and things to consider. Firstly, if you have not purchased a public transport card, known as a Go card, please do so. The green card on the slide is for concession card holders and the blue is for adults. You can purchase one from most news agencies and the news agency at St Lucia campus upon your arrival. You can also purchase one through the TransLink website. Now TransLink is a public transport system that provides timetables, maps for buses, trains and ferries. The website will also inform viewers of the average cost of travel. To the left of the slide you will see a map taken from the TransLink website that tells you how long it will take via public transport to get to St Lucia each day. This will help to plan your journey to campus and effectively manage your time. For those of you studying at other campuses, I recommend you also use the TransLink website too. Now, the suburbs in green show that it will take around 10 minutes to get to the campus via public transport. Those suburbs in red indicate 20 minutes to campus, those in blue, 30, those in yellow, 40, and those in purple, around 50 minutes. Now, please note, those suburbs that aren't coloured, located at the top of the map, will take you around one hour to get to campus. Keep in mind that there are many train lines and buses that will take you to campus, so don't think that you can't live outside the colour-coded areas. Please take some time to view our suburb guide, which is found through the accommodation website. Now, the website will inform you of some of the suburbs in Brisbane and its surrounds, how long it will take for you to get to Hurston, St Lucia and the distance to the CBD, the city. The suburb guide will inform you of basic information about each suburb, show you images and let you know of the cost that it would be to live in a share house, a unit or a three bedroom house. This will allow you to budget accordingly. So what are your accommodation options? There are three. Firstly, you can join our UQ Rentals database, a site for staff and students of UQ who are seeking accommodation or want to list their vacant property or bedroom. The database is free and it's really easy to use. Students and UQ staff can simply register as a future student if they don't yet have their UQ email address and password, input your personal email and create a password. Your access will then be approved once you have sent through proof that you are studying or working here at UQ. For those current students, simply register as a current student using your UQ email address and the password that you use to enter into sign it. You will then be granted instant access to the site and can begin to search for accommodation. We have a membership of close to 18,000 on UQ rentals and a range of private providers, preferred accommodation providers, as well as real estate agents and some of our colleges. Before a listing is approved, the accommodation team will ensure that the provider is following the rental legislation. Please note, we do not own or operate any of these properties. Approved students and staff will need to get approved access to the site, and once they've found a listing, you simply scroll to the bottom of the screen and there will be the contact details of the provider. Please ensure you physically inspect the property to make sure it's the right fit for you. The second accommodation is for students seeking off-campus accommodation. We have five preferred accommodation providers. These are large companies that house students from UQ and surrounding institutions. The providers offer a fully furnished place, usually with all utilities included, as well as a community engagement program. This means that on a regular basis, there are events such as trivia nights or dinners to get students out of their bedroom and socialising with one another. 
It's recommended that you begin to make inquiries and search for accommodation at least one month prior to your arrival at UQ. The great thing about our preferred providers is that you will enjoy your experience. So you can feel safe to book over the phone or online if you can't physically inspect the property prior to your arrival in Brisbane. Please refer to the accommodation website for more specific information regarding our preferred providers. Lastly, we have 10 residential colleges at St Lucia and one at Gatton. These colleges are located on campus and offer a fully furnished place all meals and tutorial and support programs, as well as cross-campus events to help students engage with one another. Please ensure you get in as early as possible as they're in very high demand. If you are starting in semester one, make inquiries by September or October the previous year, and if starting in semester two, inquire by May of the same year. All contact details can be found through the accommodation website please contact the colleges directly as they all operate separately from us here at the university. Things to remember. Please be cautious of Gumtree. Gumtree is a website where you can sell or buy anything and everything. The website is not always filtered and does not always adhere to tenancy legislation. If you find accommodation through this website, please ask many questions and inspect the property thoroughly before agreeing to move in. As per the second point, please ensure that you get a written agreement wherever possible. Although this is not mandatory, it is highly recommended so both the tenant and the landlord are aware of their rights and responsibilities throughout their tenancy. What do you need to do to prepare to secure your property? Well, you will need to show a form of identity such as a driver's licence or passport. Please ensure you make copies of these documents and not simply hand the originals over. You will also need to show a proof of income. This is a common requirement as the landlord or real estate agency need to be sure that you can cover the cost of rent for the full length of your tenancy. You can attach copies of your bank statements or your parents income if they are financially supporting you. If you're employed or receive a stipend or scholarship you can attach copies of these documents to support your application. You will also need to show any visa conditions as real estate agents or landlords may be reluctant to approve your housing application for say 12 months if you're only going to be in the country for around nine. If residing in student accommodation, you may need to show proof that you are in fact a student. This means a copy of your enrollment or ID card or a confirmation of enrollment letter located to the right of the screen. Lastly, if you have lived elsewhere, outside of the family home, and have a good tenancy record, you may wish to attach some tenancy references that outline that you paid your rent on time, were a good and tidy tenant. Now this is not compulsory, but may help to boost your application. This is an image of the confirmation of enrolment letter that indicates the course start and end date. Things to consider. Will you be sharing with friends, living with a partner, or only with males or females? The more people you share with, the cheaper the rent will be, and you will have the opportunity to mix with a range of cultures and hopefully form lasting friendships. Have a think about when you are really busy with examinations and other assessment items. Will you be able to live together? Living by yourself has benefits too. The mess you make is all yours, it will be much quieter than living in a share house, but rent will be more expensive and you may get lonely. Think about what works best for you. There's no right or wrong answer. Also, think about whether you want to live in a furnished or unfurnished place. There are some places that are totally furnished so you can move in just with your suitcase. These places are usually our preferred providers and the colleges, although you can purchase linen and cooking appliances such as rice cookers. To the right of the screen there is a completely unfurnished place. Think about whether you can afford to purchase all of your furniture and appliances. Often with private share housing students will be required to furnish their own bedrooms but the common areas such as the kitchen and lounge and dining areas are fully furnished. 
We've now covered finding a place, so let's move on to the application stage, getting ready to apply for a house. The RTA, or the Residential Tenancies Authority documents to sign, and bond lodgement. You found a place that you like. Well, contact the provider via email or telephone, quoting the reference number if there is one, or let them know of the name and the number of the property you are interested in. Let the person or company know that you'd like to view the room or property and arrange a time that suits both people. If you're moving into a share house, try your best to meet with your potential housemates. Part of living in a share house is enjoying the company and getting along with one another. If the housemates are free, perhaps go for a coffee to talk about their hobbies, what they do for work or what they study. Also, talk about what type of people they are, as this will indicate whether they are compatible with you. For example, if you enjoy a quiet environment, but your potential housemates prefer a party, we suggest you keep searching. Ensure you have prepared all the documents from the previous slide, and ensure you have money to cover the full rent. When you go to physically inspect the property, ensure that you check for mould, particularly in the bathroom and other areas that get hot, such as the toilet or the kitchen. Queensland is a warm climate, so ensure you test the exhaust fans for good ventilation. Don't always believe images you find online. Photoshop is a great thing, and some photos of properties are from when they were first built or after renovations, and may not always look that way in person. As mentioned before, take some time, where possible, to get to know your housemates. Now to the fun part, the RTA. This stands for the Residential Tenancies Authority, and that's the governing body in Queensland that ensures that all people who are renting, landlords and tenants, follow the law. You will come across two types of lease agreements, a general tenancy or a rooming agreement. Firstly, to the left of the screen, the General Tenancy Agreement. Say you are renting a whole house with five people. All of these people and you will be on the written agreement or lease, and there will only be one lease for the whole household. Once you have all signed the document, this means that you all agree to the conditions of the lease and are all responsible for the upkeep of common areas, your bedrooms, and often the garden and garages. If one person falls behind in rent, you can all be warned. So ensure that everyone is aware of their rights and responsibilities. To the right of the screen, a rooming agreement. Say there is a 200 bedroom complex. Can you imagine 200 students on the one lease? That would get messy. So instead, there is a rooming agreement. Each student will get their own agreement between them and their landlord or the company that they're renting from. No one else is involved. The agreement will include house rules, such as no swimming in the pool after 8.30pm or no noise after 10pm. These are some basic differences between general and rooming agreements, but please refer to the RTA website for more information. Once you've found a suitable place, it's time to start the lease and move in. Ensure you read through your lease, understand it, and then sign. Don't feel pressured to sign straight away. Accommodation services can provide some basic information regarding your lease that may assist when making a decision about renting. If you do not have time or do not have a written agreement, you can always download the relevant forms from the RTA website for both you and the landlord to sign or request the agreement to be in writing. As stated before, this will ensure everyone's expectations are highlighted. You may be asked to pay a bond, which I will discuss shortly, as well as a key receipt or swipe card. This will allow the real estate to have a record of how many keys you have. You will also be asked to sign a condition entry report. This is very important. Upon you moving into your new accommodation, you will be provided with a condition entry report from the real estate agent. It is a document that lists every room in the house and each inclusion, such as furniture and appliances. The real estate would have written any comments beside each room and inclusions. Three days after moving in, you are required to complete the report and return this to your real estate. 
you will need to thoroughly go through each room in the property and write down any imperfections. We also recommend that you take some photos and archive them. At the end of your lease, this report will be compared with your current surroundings. If the report doesn't match up with current surroundings, you may be charged for damages. Under the rooming agreement, you do not need to complete an entry condition report. However, it is highly recommended. You can take some photos and fill in the entry condition report forms available from your landlord or the RTA website. Bond is a deposit that is paid in full before a tenant moves in to their accommodation. Provided they leave the premises in the same condition as when they entered, neat and tidy, they should get their full bond refund. By law, bond cannot be any more than four weeks worth of rent. If paying bond, whether it be a dollar or $2,000, it must be lodged with the RTA. If you are asked to pay a bond, you need to complete this form that the landlord should give to you. It's fairly straightforward. You'll complete your section without leaving any blank spaces and provide this to your landlord to complete their section. They then lodge the form with the RTA and in around two months, you should receive a receipt for your records. At the end of your tenancy, you will then complete a bond refund form and return this to your landlord. Please ensure you do not close your Australian bank account as this is where your refund will go. If you close your account, a cheque will be mailed to the address on the form, so ensure your address is up to date. You are allowed to put an overseas address, but be aware that the cheque may take a little longer to arrive and you will not get your full bond back as international fees will be deducted. Let's talk about during your tenancy. We will cover your rights and responsibilities, rent payments, subleasing, breaking your lease, entry notices and touch on life skills. Firstly, please pay your rent on time. Failing to do so will incur a warning and a possible eviction if this occurs. Please ensure you budget for your accommodation. A general rule is that you shouldn't be spending any more than 50% of your income on rent. Please note that if you are not staying in your accommodation because you've gone on holidays or you're at your partner's place, you still owe rent. You signed a lease and agreed to pay rent for a set period, so you need to ensure you pay your rent. Moving on to subleasing. Subleasing is when you are renting out a room or a property and then you release the room or property to others. As a result, you become the lessor or the person responsible for collecting rent and making sure that tenants are following the same rules as a landlord would. You can sublease, provided you get written permission from the landlord or the real estate. You should also ensure that any subleasing agreements are written to avoid confusion and potential conflict later down the track. It may be easy to understand through this table. Usually, you are a tenant and you pay your rent to the landlord. Say you're going away for five months and want to get someone to take over your bedroom and pay rent while you're away. Once you have written permission from the landlord, you can then advertise to find someone to sublease your bedroom. This person will pay rent to you and you then pass the rent on to the landlord or real estate. Subleasing can be risky as you need to act not only as a tenant but also be aware of the real estate rules. If the subleasing tenant forgets to pay rent or damages the property, you might be liable to damages. So please ensure you consult the RTA for tips on subleasing and always get a written agreement. Breaking your lease is a common term you may come across. Break lease means that a lease has ended before its expiry date. For example, say you sign a 12 month lease and after 4 months you want to move out. Firstly, read through your lease and then you will need to get written permission from your landlord and give them 2 weeks written notice to leave. With the landlord's permission, you can then advertise to find someone to take over your lease, move into your bedroom or property and continue paying rent instead of yourself. You can then leave the premises and apply to get your full bond refund. Be aware that sometimes there are fees associated with breaking your lease, so ensure you budget for this. 
Very quickly, let's go through entry notices. Under a general tenancy agreement, you will be given seven days notice of an inspection. Under rooming agreement, you may only be given 48 hours written notice. Keep this in mind when renting. Life skills. We will cover cleaning rosters, food sharing, expectations from housemates and what's available around your suburb. Firstly, if living in a share house, make sure there is a cleaning roster. Having a roster will ensure all tenants are aware of their cleaning duties and that way people will not get confused or not be involved with conflict in the house. This is a simple cleaning roster that you might want to draw up and stick to your fridge or a pin board. Week 1 through to 3, Jack and Jill are responsible for the carpets, floors, kitchen, garbage disposal, toilets and showers. Weeks 4 through to 6, it's Tom and Jerry's turn and so on. Each person has a different preference when it comes to eating and cooking. As a household, you might like to cook together or prepare meals separately. You may each have your own section of the pantry and contribute a few dollars each week to the communal items such as toilet paper and laundry detergent. Make sure you talk about this with your housemates as this will avoid any conflict and confusion down the track. Make sure you're compatible with your housemates. This doesn't mean you have to do everything together but it means you should feel safe and comfortable in your own home. It's important to get to know your housemates. For example, say I have a beautiful house and my hobbies include reading and yoga. I advertise to get another housemate and talk to them for around five minutes. They told me they'd pay rent on time, so I let them move in. However, while I'm out, they have a party that gets out of control. And in the morning, my kitchen looks like this. Perhaps I should have asked them more questions. On another note, look out for what's around you. If you enjoy going to the gym, perhaps live near one. If you need to be near an airport or a doctor, consider living in a suburb nearby these facilities. Say I find a fabulous house and the people are lovely. I have a big room and there's even a chef, but I fail to look at what is around me. Then maybe I should have considered the bigger picture. Although many of you are looking to move in, let's quickly go over moving out. Please ensure you pay your bills. This includes your utilities like internet, gas and electricity. You can contact your provider to get a final bill and let them know you're moving. If you are leaving at the end of your lease, you should still provide two weeks written notice. Be aware of any hidden costs. These are usually written under the special terms and conditions of your lease and may include something like carpet cleaning or pest control. Don't forget to also complete your bond refund form as discussed earlier. The form is available from the landlord but can also be found through the RTA website. And that covers the accommodation workshop. You'll see our contact details here on the screen. Everything I've discussed today can be found through our accommodation website. Thank you for tuning in and happy house hunting.